Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. And welcome to the last of my unveiled videos where I talk to you about the changes that I've made, uh, the upgrades that I've made to my home cinema review system and some of the other bits that are in here, which I'll talk to you about very, very soon. Now, it's that time of year again where it gets really hot in here. So my shorts come out and like your favorite PE teacher, the shorts stay on until it starts to snow outside. While we're doing new and unveiled things, someone left a comment in one of my videos recently. They felt that I should untuck my t-shirt and be a bit more cool and casual. I actually feel a little bit scruffy dressed like this, so maybe leave a comment down below in the, in the uh, comment section of what you think. Does it make any difference? Do I now look scruffy? Do you now take me a lot less seriously because I've got my t-shirt hanging out? We'll see. So, purpose of this video, I want to talk to you about and I'll unveil the changes that I've made in here from an acoustics point of view predominantly. And you can probably see behind me things look a little different if you're a regular to the channel, things are looking a little different. So without further ado, I'm going to move to the side so you can have a look at this lovely acoustic treatment or acoustic set of acoustic treatments really behind me. Now this is not one, not two, not three, but nine GIK Acoustics Gotham Diffusers or, or Diffusion Acoustic Treatments. What is diffusion and what is the purpose of diffusion? Well, just a quick breakdown in case you're not aware. When a sound source hits a boundary, for example, a speaker plays its sound, that sound hits the wall. The sound will reflect back off of the wall, if we're talking about a bare wall, equally and arrive to you, the audio listener, uh, with a slight delay. And if you imagine, there's lots of sounds coming out of lots of speakers sometimes, reflecting off of lots of walls, all coming back to the listener at different times, which creates basically smear and really distortion for what you should be hearing. And I find you, you notice it most with soundstage and other things as well. So diffusion is a clever, very, 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 very clever method actually of reflecting sound back at a listener, but in a controlled way and in a diffused way. So it tricks the brain into not being aware that there is a reflection actually happening. That's the bit that's really, really interesting. Or what it actually seems to do, it makes the room feel bigger, much, much bigger. Diffusion is scientific, it's mathematical, there's a lot to it, and there's a lot to what makes one diffuser much, much better than another. I'm gonna to talk to you about that in future videos. But diffusion as a tool is extremely powerful, but it's also very limited. And that's the bit that you often don't hear much about through different hi-fi videos or things from other hi-fi enthusiasts. Diffusion works in a very limited range, or at least some of them do. Now, Behind me is nine GRK Acoustics Gotham diffusers. It's quadratic diffusion and it's two dimensional. Quadratic means mathematically calculated based on a root number. And it means it's predictable in its effects of what it will do. Two dimensional means as the sound hits the diffuser, it's gonna diffuse or reflect sound back horizontally and vertically. By comparison to a one-dimensional diffuser, something like what I've got at the rear of the room, GRK Acoustics Q7D diffusers, these are kind of like a typical diffuser that, diffuser that you'll be probably more familiar with that you'll see. That is, again, predictable in what it's going to do and the frequencies that it's going to affect, but that only will reflect sound in one direction. So if you have the diffusion going vertical, it diffuses it horizontally. Flip the diffuser on its side and you're gonna get vertical diffusion. A little, little bit like what you can see up in the corners up there. So why have I installed these nine GRK Acoustics Gotham diffusers? Now the big one for me was a visual, a visual thing. And if some of you are looking at that thinking something's not quite right about the way I've installed it, all I would say to you is do this with your head and it looks absolutely perfect. If, now, if you remember what used to be up here, and I'll quickly throw that up on the screen now just to remind you, that was all acoustic treatment from GRK Acoustics as well, a mixture of varied diffusion and a little bit of absorption in there as well. So acoustically, it was up there serving its purpose. With the black sheet of devore material kind of hung down in front of it, 
it looked very, very ugly. And I think you've got to admit, this looks much nicer. And it's, I've got to be honest, when you sit in the listening chair looking at this, I don't know, it's something a little bit special. It makes you feel, I don't know, it just makes me feel a lot happier sitting there looking at that as opposed to looking at something that was really, really ugly. GRK Acoustics Gotham uh, diffusers are made from MDF. So I'm tempted to pull them all down, maybe treat them with a, with a stain or maybe paint them or something like that. I'm, I'm kind of toying with the idea, but at the moment, I really just quite like the MDF kind of rugged look. But that's not the only thing that's really, really interesting about the GRK Acoustics Gotham panels. Now, for starters, they're mathematically designed to be put together like this, like a mural of them or kind of like a, a stack of them. And that's really, really important because not all diffusion is designed that way. Something to definitely bear in mind if you want to put something together like this from different treatments. Probably more interesting than any of that is that from a frequency effect point of view, remember, remember back to what I said about diffusion being very limited in what it can do, these are not. Now normally with most acoustic treatments and especially diffusion, the frequency range it will work to is all based around kind of like the size or the depth of the actual diffuser itself. So if you see diffusers that are about one inch deep, they're only gonna work a very limited frequency range. If you see diffusers that are made from foam, well then they're actually gonna be absorbers and not diffusers. Now the GRK Acoustics Q7D diffusers that I mentioned before that are at the rear of my room, they are about seven inches deep from memory. Then that's got seven different wells on it and each individual well is a bit different depth. And it's the deeper wells that allow the, the diffuser to work at a lower frequency. Now what is cool about the Gotham diffusers and because of the way it's designed with all the intricate little cuts and all the little details, the frequency range that these work at is really extended. I think it's about the lowest of any diffusion based product that's out there on the market. Now these work from 600 hertz. They scatter sound from 600 hertz and they diffuse sound right up to nine and a half kilohertz. So that's a huge, huge range. That's not too far off what an absorption broadband bass trap would have an effect on. That's really something quite unique for diffusion. If you go and check the stats for a lot of diffusion products out there, you'll find the range that they work in is much more focused and much more limited. And again, that's something really important to bear in mind. So it's one of the reasons why I love GRK Acoustics is their products are fantastic. They're all lab tested, so you know exactly what they're gonna do when you put them in. And if you think, you know, I look at room acoustics, I've only got so much room in my room for starters. There's only so much wall space, there's only so much corner space, there's only so much ceiling space that I'm able to treat. So every inch of that wall space or floor space or corner space to me is acoustic real estate. And I wanna be using acoustic treatments that are gonna give me the greatest effect for the amount of wall space that I can allocate. To it. It's me, it's like kind of like a bang for buck situation. There's only so much that I can apply to a room if I want it to be working as, as, as effective as possible and doing as much as it can. And that's what these are. Now, they're made from MDF, as I mentioned. It's quite a clever design, really, where it's kind of layered and put together. They're really easy to install. They come with, I think it's called a French cleat type of uh, installation system. You screw half of the, the cleat to the rear of the panel, you screw the other half to the wall. Once the, the brackets are installed, it's literally a case of just put it over, slot it down or slide it on, and that's never ever gonna go anywhere. And the good thing is, the way this system works, you've got a little bit of lateral movement, so it's easier to kind of butt things up. Now when you're putting the system together like this, what you'll find is you need to build it from the bottom up. Now I actually started the process from installing it from the top down. But in order to install them, because you need to go up and down, really, especially with the middle, you need to start at the bottom. So that's something to bear in mind if you look at this and think that's cool, I'd really love that in my listening room. Because this is a really lovely thing. To me, this is a really, really lovely thing to have in your listening room. And as I say, someone could install that probably much neater and get a better finish than that. And then you could actually finish the product, any color you want, any stain you want, you know, to look any way you want them to from a visual point of view and I think that's really nice. So what difference have they made to the sound of the room? 
Well, <laughs> from a musical point of view, I haven't actually listened to that much music recently because it's all been home cinema as I've been reviewing. But straight away, I could notice that there's a little bit more life to the room. There's a little bit of less absorption in the front of the room uh, and a little bit more life. That's really interesting because that's the bit that's now really, really interesting for me, moving this system forward. Before, I only had five speakers in here, the front three and two rear channels. So I acoustically treated this room with that in mind. Now there's 11 speakers in this room. There's eight surround sound speakers and obviously three at the front. So now I'm thinking, right, I need to take the acoustics of this room up another level because I need to start factoring in all the surround speakers that, that are at the rear of the room. And, you know, it's not something I'd really even thought about until I got to this stage of thinking, right, you know, I can now see, I was like, oh, wow, I really want acoustic treatment there and I want acoustic treatment there. So. Maybe I'll come back in the future and talk about how I acoustically treat the ceiling because to me, there's, a, there's acoustic treatment that runs all the way down the middle of this ceiling, but it's not so much on the edges because they didn't need to be there because there was no speakers there. Now we've got speakers all down the edges of the room. It's like, right, I need to start up in the acoustic game. And going on the ceiling is actually a lot easier than it initially appears if you want to use diffusion. And if you want to put absorption up, like it's up here, this free absorption panels up on the ceiling here creating what's called an acoustic cloud that's a little bit more work but going on the ceiling is actually pretty easy and these products over here which are called GRK Acoustics Versifusers they are really good products to use because they're made from like a, a polystyrene type of material they're very light and you can actually just velcro them to the ceiling it doesn't get any easier than that that is the acoustic updates to this room so from now on, you're going to be looking at something that's definitely, definitely, definitely nicer to look at. I think it's definitely more hi-fi orientated and it's a lot less clutter at the front because, you know, a lot of the home cinema stuff that was hidden behind all the cables that were there are now out and the home cinema systems completely separated. So hopefully you've enjoyed kind of this unveiling little series of videos. I really wanted to get these out of the way and tell you about what I've done. This one here is probably going to have more of an effect for home cinema with more speakers and sound coming this way than it is for stereo with more sound going this way. But for some reason, the central area between the speakers definitely has some effect. And all I can think of is sound either works its way around the room and back, or you know the speaker's not perfect. Not all of its sound will go forward. Some of it makes its way around the cabinet and back. And then it's the effect here. Who knows whether it's just a psychological, psychoacoustic effect of having something up here, which makes the difference very difficult to tell. I don't really care. As long as I hear it consistently every single time I listen, that's all I really care about. I could get my microphone out and do some acoustical measurements of this room. I already know what it does. I already know, you know, acoustically what this room is all about. And that was a you know, whole process. Now it's quite in depth and Maybe I'll do some videos on that in the future. But this room has got very low reverb. At the front of this room, really low reverb. That's on purpose. That is what I want. I don't want an echoey room. I don't want reverb. I really don't like sound really with a high reverb. It's just not for me. I like my sound to be really tight, really focused. And what I'm trying to achieve, which is really difficult, is a silent, silent background. So there is clear definition between all the elements of a sound stage. Now, I've had conversations with people recently that say that's not real, that's not natural. You know, naturally when you listen to live music, there's kind of blurring and merging and it's not quite so kind of laser etched as you can get with a hi-fi system. You know, fine, absolutely fine. Either way, for me, I still want laser etching. I want clear definition across the sound stage. Ideally with depth, I'm not so much bothered about depth. Don't get me wrong, it would be lovely to have you know, a really deep sound stage that really is very, very impressive. But I personally want clarity, focus, and I want every part of the sound stage to be like big and tactile, as if it was some someone playing a real instrument, or if it was someone singing. I want their, especially male singers or even female singers, you want their vocal to be complete. You don't want it just to be just the top bit. You want all the bottom octaves of voices, because to me that's what makes the difference between something sounding real. And something sounded recorded or played back on audio systems. So they're, they're my focuses. They don't have to be yours. Um, but again, I think it's important to talk about it and what I'm listening for, what I'm going for, and what, what kind of excites me. To finish this video, it's a lot longer than I intended it to be. 
while we're talking about acoustics room acoustics it is one of the biggest effects or one of the biggest things you'll do to a sound system one of the biggest it's, it has the, one of the biggest effects on the sound of an audio system and you know not everybody's going to want a, a room treated the same as i've done it you know different sized rooms or different kind of targets of what you want to achieve you might go about it differently but i can't think of any room anywhere that wouldn't benefit from a correctly done well designed acoustic treatment i'm going to use the word package or or tailored service or just installation whatever word you want to use for it i can't think of any room anywhere in the world for any sound reproduction or creation that's not going to benefit from a kind of a, an acoustic design so i hope you've enjoyed this video hope you've enjoyed this little series if you enjoyed it make sure you leave us a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already especially if you'd like to see more videos like this on hi-fi home cinema and all sorts make sure to go and visit website obviously the address is down below make sure to go and visit that regularly obviously the support for the channel is really really appreciated i'll see you all soon thanks for watching take care